welcome to Easy Exposure. As I promised you in the previous lesson, today we are going to talk about pool sensor and crop sensor, or DS, DX and FX, as Nikon calls them. And I will also compare my two cameras. I just got a new D800, which is full sensor camera, with my older D7000 camera. Also, as I already posted on my Facebook page, Nikon just announced the new D600 camera, which is actually at its price around uh, 2100 is one of the cheapest full sensor cameras. So, what is the difference between full and crop sensor cameras? Let's get started. The Nikon and Canon have the same size of a full-frame sensor, which is a sandwich blue square here. Also Nikon call it FX sensor. And this size was chosen for full-frame sensor because it's almost the same size as a 35mm film we used back in the days. A little bit different story is with Nikon and Canon's crop sensors. They are not the same size. The Nikon has only one size of the crop sensor and they also call it DX sensor. It's assigned by the red square on the image. But Canon has two types of crop sensor. One of them is bigger than other. One of them is Canon APS-H, which is assigned by the green square here, and another one is a Canon APS-C, which is assigned by the yellow square. Those are both crop sensors for Canon. Different manufacturers also produce a different type of lenses for crop sensor and for full sensor. And for Nikon, the X lenses are for crop sensor and FX lenses are for full sensor. So, when you go on the Nikon website and you read the name of the lens, if you have DX in the name, it means this lens is for crop sensor, and if you have FX in the name, this lens is for full sensor. And for Canon, EFS lens would be for crop sensor, and EF would be for full sensor. But remember, Canon has two types of uh, crop sensors. And I just want to point out that EFS lenses are for Canon APS-C sensor, which is a smaller crop sensor. I will try to put the list of uh, lenses which are for crop sensor and full sensor on my website for Nikon and Canon and also some third-party lenses like Sigma and Tauron. The main difference between full sensor lenses and crop sensor lenses it's their size. The full sensor lenses are made to cover a bigger sensor, to cover a full sensor, and crop sensor lenses made to cover just the crop sensor, a smaller sensor. Also, uh, crop sensor lenses are lighter than uh, full sensor lenses, of course, due to their size. They are also cheaper. But let's see what happens if we put full sensor lens on the crop sensor. Actually, you can do it, and there is some advantage to it. As you can see, the sensor is covering only the middle spot of the lens, which is called sweet spot of the lens. Because, as some of you might know, that uh, the lens is the sharpest and also has the least distortion in the middle, so this is advantage to it, because uh, the crop sensor is using only the best part of the lens and this can help to make the quality of your picture better. And now let's try other way around. Let's put crop sensor lens on full sensor body. And in this case, as you can see, that uh, the crop sensor lens is not covering the full sensor completely. And yes, you can do it, uh, and you can actually take a picture with crop sensor lens on full 
sensor body. But what you get, because the lens is not covering sensor completely, you either get the vignetting, you will get the black corners, or the camera will crop the image automatically in the camera to the size of the lens. And now let's talk about cropped factor. Let's pretend we took this picture with a full sensor camera using 50 millimeter lens. Now let's take the same picture with a cropped sensor camera with the same 50 millimeter lens. And we will be at the same distance from the subject as we were with a full sensor camera. Due to the smaller sensor, you see that our image will be cropped. We will be having 1.5 crop factor, and this is for Nikon. For Canon, uh, for smaller sensor, the crop factor is 1.6, and for a bigger crop sensor, is the crop factor is 1.3. Let's look at the pictures taken by both cameras side by side. And once again, I want to repeat that both pictures were taken by using 50mm lens and we were at the same distance from the subject. As you can see, the image on the right, taken by the crop sensor camera, appears closer to us. Which means that due to the crop factor, the 50mm lens on the crop sensor body will turn to 75 millimeters, which is focal length of the lens 50 times crop factor, which is 1.5. And this is actually one of advantages of a crop sensor because with the same lens you will get a longer focal length. So for some type of photography, like wildlife photography, sport photography, maybe macro photography, crop sensor cameras might be even better because you will get a bigger reach with your lens. Let's say if you use a 200 millimeter lens for your wildlife, it would be 200 on your full sensor camera, but in, on crop sensor it will turn into 300 millimeter lens. Another way around, uh, if you, for example, want to take a wide-angle shot, the full sensor is better because of, if you take a wide-angle lens, it would be a true wide-angle, and with crop sensor, this lens will appear longer. So let's say if you want to get an identical image from both cameras, we will have to use two different lenses if we want to get an identical image and be at the same distance to the subject. So on crop sensor we will use 50 millimeter lens, but on full sensor we will use 75 millimeter lens and we will get the same picture. Also I would like to mention that with full sensor you will get shallower depth of field. And for those of you who were watching my video about depth of field, remember um, if we are closer to the subject, you get shallower depth of field, or if we use the longer focal lengths on the lens, we are getting shallower depth of field. And this is what happens with a full sensor. We have to get closer to the subject or use longer focal lengths on the lens. That's why, at the same conditions, uh, we will get the shallower depth of field with a full sensor than with a crop sensor. But the one of my advantages of a full sensor camera is that they are better performers in darker conditions with higher ISO. They will give you less noise or grain. And I did a test comparing my two cameras, Nikon D800 and Nikon D7000. One of them is FX sensor, another one is DX sensor. Let's enlarge those images so we can see noise better because uh, on the small pictures the noise will be less obvious than on the bigger pictures. And this was taken at ISO 100 and this was ISO 200 
and this was 400 ISO and this was 800 ISO and as you can see for both images we can barely see any noise so they both perform pretty good at 800. At 1600 ISO we already starting to see some noise on the right and at ISO 3200 we start to see more and more noise for Nikon D7000 especially in the shadow areas but the picture taken by Nikon D800 still looks pretty good and at ISO 6400 we clearly see who is the winner also want to show you some snapshots I took from my Lightroom screen where I was comparing uh, two pictures taken by two cameras and I enlarged the pictures. In this picture it's one-to-one -one enlargement and as you can see with picture taken by D800 you can get closer, you can enlarge it more which means you can uh, crop your picture with less lose of quality and as you can see you can see more details on the left uh, you can also see more details in the blacks which means that full sensor of uh, D800 has a better tonal range and this is even closer enlargement this is the one to three enlargement and you clearly can see that uh, D800 has more details so let's summarize everything we learned today. Today we were talking about full sensor and cropped sensor. And also we were talking about lenses, that there are different lenses for full sensor cameras and crop sensor cameras. And the ones which are for full sensor are usually bigger. And they can be easily used on both on full sensor and on crop sensor. They actually have some advantages when you use the crop sensor because then you will use only middle part of the lens which is the sharpest and has the least distortion. You can also put the crop sensor lens on the full sensor but in this case you will get a picture with vignetting the black corners or the camera will crop the picture automatically. Also you have to consider that uh, the lens on the crop sensor will appear longer when you take the same picture with both cameras with the same distance the subject will appear closer as if the lens would be longer so you have to consider that and this is one can be one of advantages of crop sensor because you will get the further reach with the same lens also um, other way around, uh, if you need a wide angle, full sensor camera is probably better for that. Also, full sensor cameras, a big advantage of them is that they perform better in the lower light conditions with usage of higher ISO. They will give you the least noise, as I showed you in my example. And also, the details on the full sensor in the image are much better, you can zoom in more and you can crop picture without losing the details. So um, I hope this lesson was helpful to you and I see you